might not want to be going to the forest this Halloween, kids. What is up, YouTube? Today, we are going to be using Ice Rider Calyx with a very fun team that I have created with the Forest Curse Tremonant. If you don't know how Forest Curse works, it applies, attaches a grass typing to your target. It's different from Soak because instead of removing the previous typings and just putting a water type, it adds the grass typing onto the current typings as well. So, yes, we're going to be trying out this very fun Forest Curse team with Choice Specs, Torkoal, Calyx, and a lot of fun partners. If you want to try out the team, you have two weeks to grab it. Use it down below. Be sure to keep your eye out for the team builder, but there is a paste pin available in the description down below. And if you do enjoy the videos, as always, leave a like down below and leave a comment down below. It really does help me out. And you can check me out on my social medias as well. Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, all that good stuff listed down below in the description. But otherwise, let's get started and play some games. All right, we got an interesting team. This looks like Parish sort of Incineroar, Gengar, Gothitel, Amoongus, Calyrex, Ice Rider, and a Politoed. So, two Pokemon I get Parish Song, a Shao Tag user, an Amoongus, and Incineroar, which, you know, are going to be standard. But okay, it does look more like Parish now that I look at it. So, what do I exactly want to do here? Now, I do have Psychic Terrain. Psychic Terrain is actually pretty huge. The reason why Psychic Terrain is huge is because I don't get Fake Out stalled. So, uh, what do I exactly want to go here? Uh, Calyrex isn't that bad. NED Calyrex actually isn't a bad lead. But my Zapdos actually can do a lot of work against this team. But the Calyrex is still really annoying. So, I'm not exactly too sure about that. So, I think I do want to go like Calyrex NED. I think it's just such a strong lead here. And I do a lot of damage to my opponent's team anyway. Torkoal in the back and maybe Trevenant. Ooh, do I need Trevenant? Having the Forest Curse for Eruption is actually really nice. It's also it's also a good switch into Politoed. Uh, the Guzzlord is actually tempting because it's actually pretty decent against my opponent's team. But overall, I just don't know what my opponent has. I don't even know if you can go Parish here because I do have a Trevenant that could lead off. And Trevenant would be super strong. I'm not sure if you're going to lead the Incineroar. Maybe you do, but there is the Zapdos, so my opponent does have to keep that in mind. Maybe it's going to be like Incineroar Calyx, for instance. If that's the case, we could be in a little bit of trouble, but let's see here. It's going to be Gothitelle Gengar lead. Okay. Interesting. So, I lead off right off the bat with my Calyx Entity here. Don't have... Okay. So, I wonder what the Gengar does. Does it have Wisp? I'm not exactly too sure. Expanding Force plus a Glacial Land seems very tempting here. Incineroar could swap in, that's completely fine. Because it's not like I really want to try to catch on the switch anyway. I'm going to do a pretty decent amount, I think, with the Glacial Lands. So I'll go for the Glacial Lands here. And I think Expanding Force, because if the Gengar Sash, I do want to get rid of it. Shadow Ball is also a tempting option, but I don't think it's necessary. Help Hand Shadow Ball shouldn't KO, I think, unless the Gengar has choice specs. So yeah, I'm just going to go on the offense here and try to get as much damage to the Gothitelle, try to break through it. We're going to see the Gothita go for the Protect, which is fine. I'm going to give it to Gengar if you're not going to do anything. Parish Song is going to come out. That's okay. I mean, <laughs> it's funny how we used Parish in the last episode, but I'll gladly take this position. I'll get the knock on Gengar. Let's see if I do get disabled by Curse Body. That is actually a little bit of a concern as, let's see, Gengar able to survive with the Focus Sash. No surprise there. Do I get Curse Bodied? Uh, the Calyx is probably the one more that I care about than NDD because NDD, I think I was going to click Shadow Ball anyway. So, here comes the Glacial Lance. I will get an Attack Boost though, which is actually very crucial here. So, Gengar does go down. There's the Cursed Body. I speak it into action every single time for some reason. Always do. I don't know why. Here comes the boost with the Calyx. Okay. So, three turns of Parish. They are down a Pokemon though, which is actually really big. Or parish setup so and they can't fake out stall so i don't know what they have a Moongus could come out i guess i just like follow me lance i believe or follow me high horsepower the goftel slot is fine as well so it's gonna be the incinor that's okay really sucks that i can't uh, go for the protect but that's all right i think i'm gonna i want to go for expanding force if they have a Moongus in the back they might try to go for something here High horsepower and Incineroar isn't that bad either because I do need the big damage into the Incineroar slot. I just don't know if he parting shot out right away, but it could be protect Incineroar. I kind of just want to go for the high horsepower here and I don't want to draw for Shadow Ball. I'm really expecting potentially a Moongus and if it's a Jack Spots and a Moongus, that is a little bit concerning. But yeah, I'm just going to draw for Shadow Ball. Let's see. It's going to be Ally Switch actually. Okay. 
makes sense as well. Uh, thank God it wasn't allies which protect. I thought about that earlier, but I was hoping that wouldn't be the case. Get a shadow ball off so I get some damage into the Incineroar. Every bit of damage is actually pretty useful. Fire shot going to come out in the Calyx, so I'm at a minus one stage. Okay. Does that mean it's going to be the Amoongus once again? It's just, it's really annoying, man. I, I would just click Glacial Lands in this position if it didn't get cursed bodied, but we did get cursed bodied. Is this Politoed? It is Politoed. Okay, that's not too bad. Politoed does come out here. That is okay ish. Not the greatest, but it's okay ish. Here comes high horsepower into the Politoed slot. Get a good amount of chip. Every bit of chip is actually pretty important here. If I can snipe the Incineroar somehow, that would be really nice. I'm going to go for Trick Room here because I want Torkoal under Trick Room with Trevenant, I think. And I'll go for the sh Expanding Force here in case no protects. And I just want a bit of chip anyway. So yeah, I'm just going to go for Expanding Force. They're going to retreat Polytoke back in Incineroar. That's fine too. Okay. I could potentially snipe the Polytoke on the switch because Gothitelle is probably going to have to switch out for the last turn. If that's the case, High Horsepower and Expanding Force is very tempting there. We do see a protect from Gothitelle. That's completely fine. As I said before, I don't really think this is a bad position at all. And afterward, the problem is... I'll still have one more turn of Psychic Terrain afterwards. So they can't fake out, which is actually really solid. So Parish is counting down. I am going to go for the high horsepower here. I'm going to target down the Gothitelle slot. And I am going to go for the expanding force into the Gothitelle slot too. This means Plytoad should be trapped in. I could high horsepower the Incineroar, but again, I don't know if the Incineroar has Protect, so that's the main reason I just want to go get the damage into Politoed. It's also useful for my Tremnant with the Horn Leech, so that's fine as well. It is Protect Incineroar, reveal it, nice. So I get all this extra damage, they don't get Fake Out Rotation, which is really solid. Because I do get a high horsepower off into Politoed. Good amount of damage, Citrus Berry, no Citrus Berry, Expanding Force going to come out. This is a pretty powerful Expanding Force, since I'm actually like max special attack. This KOs, that's actually a really fantastic spot for me. Ooh, just barely missing the knockout, but that might actually be better. That might actually be better for me. Okay, so... Oh, I can't have to eat the berry because Calyx. I forgot because I remember their Calyx, but I couldn't remember my Calyx. That's fine, too, I think. I think that's fine, too. I should be able to get in my Trevenants next to my Torkoal here. And... I think I should be fine. I would have probably liked Zapdos more in this position than my Trevenant here, but Trevenant should be able to get a Forest Curse off into the Incineroar slot. A Shuckaberry Incineroar. Okay, that's good to know. I mean, the Russian is just going to do a lot of damage here regardless, and I do have my uh, Forest Curse available to it. So we are going to go for the Eruption here, and we are going to go for the Forest Curse into the Incineroar. Let's see if we can break through the Incineroar with the Forest Curse plus Eruption. It's going to do a lot of damage. It's not going to make it in super effective against the Incineroar, but it'll make it neutral, and that's a big change into the Incineroar slot. I wonder if I can knock it out because I got a bit of chip damage into the Incineroar slot earlier. We will see here, though. I wonder if Politos is going to protect or swap. The thing is, my opponent has to get Parish Song back, and the Politos is really low at this point. Ooh, okay. Incineroar swapping to Gothitelle. Interesting. And Politoed going to go for Protect. I mean, that's okay. Because I get the Forest Curse off in the Gothitelle. I think my opponent was trying to just go for the f Fake Out Rotation. Because this is the last time I get Terrain. Uh, this is going to work out great for me. Because if I knock out Gothitelle, I should just be able to get a Horn Leech off into Politoed anyway. So here comes a Eruption Forest Curse. The Gothitelle does go down. And Incineroar can come out. But I can just go for Horn Leech uh, the following turn. This is not a bad spot, actually. I think my opponent was hoping to have remaining Mons, but I just had no reason not to. I'm pretty sure Specs Eruption would have been able to knock out Polytoad. And now, I think my opponent needs to double protect. Because I always horn. Do I always horn leash? No, I always horn leash the Polytoad, I think. It's the thing that's doing the most damage to Torkoal. And Cinder can choose to flare, but it takes a bunch of recoil, though, which is great for me. And uh, I think Polytoad could go for a double protect here. It might be my opponent's only way out, but I'm actually not sure. But they do go for a fake out instead, which I'm glad I did go for the Horn Leech here into the Polytoad. To pick up that knockout, this should be able to. Yep, Polytoad goes down. Excellent. Okay. This didn't turn out as badly as it could have been. So I am able to pick up the knockout on Polytoad. And we actually have one more turn of Trick Room, it looks like. 
Oh man, it looks like perfectly timed. We're gonna go for the Forest Cursed Eruption and we might knock out an Incineroar with a Forest Curse Eruption. So we do get another Forest Curse off into the Incineroar. Add that Grass Typing to that Incineroar, which is fantastic. And come on, single target Specs Torkoal Sun Eruption. I've said too many words. Just knocks out Incineroar. Goodbye, Incineroar. Have you ever seen a Torkoal knock out Incineroar with a Fire type move? I'm not sure. You might have if you've seen this strat before. Not sure if it's been pulled off in this series, but hey, <laughs> that was fun. Just clicking your eruption thing. I think I could have played the early turns better. I could have probably caused some switches. Uh, the glacial lance thing was a little bit unfortunate. Although I don't know if I got a glacial lance in the Gothitoil at all in one point, if I had an opportunity to. So that is a little bit of a thing. I mean, I got rid of Gengar turn on, which is fantastic. And I could have played better against the Sinor, I guess I could have like following me high horsepower i guess there were a lot of there were probably quite a few options that i had that i could have done but overall it just ended up working because i got to trick him up at a good timing i got the pressure with torkoal and the forest curse they didn't have really good switches psychic terrain pretty much lasting out the perfect amount of time and polytilt was super low which was great so i'd be able to pick up the knockout with either torkoal specs eruption in the sun or just a horn leech from trevenant and that's exactly what happened so luckily that end game did just play off to my favor today's video is brought to you by keeper security keeper security is one of the world's most trusted password managers as well as ways to protect your computer from cybersecurity threats if you're interested in protecting your computer and your phone from potential threats make sure you go check out the link down below for 30 percent off with the code beast coast all right, we're pretty high up on the ladder because it is a brand new season. We got a Galarian and Moltres in Cinnor Landis variant, the Amoongus, Jellicent, and Zacian. So this is actually a potentially very scary team, but we do have quite a few things. Zapdos is actually really good against my opponent's team, which is kind of weird, but it is because my opponent does have double intimidate. So the question is, do I want to bring Zapdos? Because I actually kind of just want to go something like, uh, the problem is Trevin in DD isn't really a great matchup because of that Moltres. So that is a little bit of a concern right there. Cause I'm worried they lead Moltres. I could get a little bit ugly right here. So maybe something simple. Calyrex in DD doesn't seem like a bad lead. It just pretty much guarantees Trick Room from what I'd imagine here. So that's not a terrible lead here. I do like the Trevenant because it is good against Jellicent and then Torkoal just sweeps this entire team if I get Trick him up. Realistically, if I weaken the Jellicent, I get to click Specs Eruption against my opponent's entire team. Incineroar, if it gets weakened early on or if I get the Forest Curse off, uh, it just is going to go down to Specs Eruption. My opponent does have the best ways to uh, deal with it either. So that's going to be the goal. Uh, let's see if I'm right though. I think Moltres does lead here. Or not even close. It's Jellicent and Okay, Jellicent plus the Zacian right here. Or Zacian, however you want to pronounce it. I'm not sure what this position is. Uh substitute could come out. A swap could come out immediately. I'm kind of glad I didn't lead my Zapdos here, because my Zapdos would be in a kind of awkward spot. So Calyx lead is better. I would have like Tremnant lead more though. Tremnant lead would have been uh, more helpful. I will go for the follow me, I think. And I kind of want to just get damage off if possible. I kind of want to just go for Glacial Lance because I, no, there could be an Incineroar swap and a substitute. There's a lot of place my opponent actually has here. I'm not exactly too sure what my opponent's going to do. Water Spout is an option plus Behemoth Blade. They can go for substitute, uh, which I'd imagine they could reverse Trick Room attempt. They are going to substitute. That's perfect. And they just water spout. Okay. Which doesn't do that much realistically. It's not even a 2 KO on NDD, which is nice. I do get the high horsepower. I thought I missed for a second. I am able to break the Zacian substitute, which is really nice here. Okay. Ooh, now the question is a Zacian attack here. Expanding force would do a really solid amount of damage to these Pokemon. And I'm really tempted to predict a potential substitute again. And if that's the case, I like this is super risky potentially. But I feel like it could be a really good position. So I am tempted to go for expanding force and maybe just trick him up here. And I think I will risk it here. I think it's okay to risk. Let's see. Zacian protects. That's even better, actually, because I still get damage onto Jellicent to prevent Water Spell from doing that much damage. So here comes expanding force. I'm actually faster than Jellicent with my entity. That's an interesting note here. Okay, here comes the 
expanding force so much damage to jellison because it's a crit okay i was about to say that was doing way too much damage here comes a water spout right here into my pokemon but since i weakened it not really doing too much i'm actually really surprised my opponent didn't click sub there over protect but all right that's perfect right here now i'm able to get so much damage off right here i'm just gonna click uh glacial lens plus expanding force i think overall i don't see really a big problem with it i could they should already protect it and Cinder could come out for that slot that's fine i'm kind of fine with just sacking these pokemon off to get uh torkoal in realistically i think torkoal in would be better here and there's a chance that my opponent has landers in the back and swaps it on a potential high horsepower so I am going to go for the Glacial Lands. We are going to see the swap here from my opponent into the Incineroar. Okay, could have went for the higher horsepower. I don't think I had to go greedy there, though, at all. Uh, gets an Intimidate off. That's fine. Uh, chip damage into Incineroar is beautiful. Again, for that eruption, especially with the Forest Cursed. And the Glacial Lands might allow me just to KO Jellicent uh, with the Expanding Force, so they can't reverse Trick Room, which is really solid. So, here comes Glacial Lands. Good damage into Jellicent. I don't think that was a crit. That was just good damage, yeah and strength set oh i forgot that move exists yeah so they heal from my calyrex but they intimidate me earlier so they shouldn't be healing as much still a good amount though but i'll still get a pretty good bending force right here okay not bad damage and i am just gonna keep clicking expanding force the problem is i gotta use these trick room turns wisely because it's gonna be really hard to reset trick room uh, later on so the question is, do I want to go for the high horsepower in Incin, or do I want to swap? And swapping actually seems pretty good to me into Trevenant. I don't know if you're going to try to verse Trick Room right here. You could, uh, theoretically, but you might try to Strength Sap again, which would be fine with me. So I'm going to bring in my Trevenant. Uh, try to get maybe Torkoal in. We're going to find Berries, uh, Mental Herb, and Citrus. Okay. Strength Sap once again into the Trevenant slot. Not that great for me, but it's okay. It's not terrible. This Jellicent's really annoying. Strength Zap Jellicent, man. Throw Chop gonna come out into also the Calyrex slot. Not what I expected. Okay. Uh, that's fine, I think. I'm able to... I could potentially just heal my... Trevenant here, which is in a bad position. I'm gonna follow me and go for the Horn Leech right here. The only problem is these Trick Room turns, and I'm not gonna have NDD for the rest of the game. Which is a little bit concerning, but not much we can do here. Hornley's just going to come out into the Jellicent slot. Good amount of HP right there. Let's see if they pick up a knockout and don't reverse Trick Room. If they reverse Trick Room, actually, I could probably get it back up. They Water Spout this time. Interesting. Okay. And they're going to go for Flare Blitz. Okay. I can get a double knockout, I think, because Jelson probably doesn't have protect. This should I should have one more turn of Trick Room after this. Psychic Terrain disappears. I didn't Trick Room up the first turn. Yeah. So I can go Calyrex here. And I think I could force Curse the Incineroar slot and go for the Glacial Lands. Pick up a uh, knockout right here. That's not a bad option Rio, right here. Because I pretty much get a KO, I think, into anything that my opponent decides to go for. So... Yeah, I think we'll go for it. I get to knock on Jelson in this position. I could also double verse Trick Room, but the thing is, I don't know if Incineroar stays in or not. I think it could swap too, which is the annoying part, but I am going to go for the Forest Curse here and the Glacial Lance. I mean, I do get two knockouts if Jelson doesn't swap here. Uh, Jelson is going to swap. That's okay. Zacian is going to come in. All right, good swap on their part. I am going to be able... Ooh, this is interesting, actually. Okay, and Sinor swaps too. That's pretty bad. Because uh, Amoongus, the Forest Curse on Amoongus is not going to help much, unfortunately. So, we are going to be able to get a Forest Curse. It actually doesn't work. <laughs> I guess since it's already Grass type. Because Glacial Lance. I wish I went for the Forest Curse into the Jelson slot. But I wasn't sure if my opponent was going to try to stay in with Incineroar or not. Uh, the Amoongus goes down, so it can't spore me. Okay, it's not... The position isn't great, but it's not terrible. It's not great, though. Because my opponent can get a double knockout. That's the thing. So it should be Incineroar here. And I'm assuming I would just flare up its uh, Behemoth Blade right here if I was my opponent. Yeah. Although I do get a free swap here into Torkoal, I think. If I protect one of these Pokemon and swap for the other slot. 
And I think I'll just swap for the Calyx slot. And go for the Protect on Trevenant. I don't think it really matters which way it goes on. So we'll bring out the Torkoal right here. They could sub up here too. It's a little bit greedy because if I do go for one of Sacrificial Trick Room, uh, that'd be bad for them. But let's see if they do. I will Protect Trevenant. They could also be Hemic Blade, I guess. And the Trevenant and Flare Blitz, which is fine as well. They fake out the Calyrex. Okay, are they subbing? Oh, they do Behemoth Blade. Okay, that works out. That works out because I take less damage with Torkoal. So I'm okay with that 100%. Uh, we'll go for an Earth Power here. He just in slow, so it gets knocked out to the Earth Power specs. But I could Heat Wave in that case, too. I'm just not sure if I want to go for Heat Wave here or not. I think Earth Power is just generally fine into the Torkoal slot. And I kind of want to actually sack Calyrex because I think Tremnant's more useful. Yeah, I'm going to do that, actually. Because I could see Zacian Protect as well. And the Flare with Sack here. I could definitely see that coming out. Or not to play up its sack, but... Well, they don't know what my moveset is on Torkoal. But our power should get a KO into the Incineroar slot. Either Jellicent or the Incineroar is getting knocked out this upcoming turn. So, Protect is going to come out from Zacio. Nice. I'd imagine you can't let Trickum go up, so you have to Flare Blitz. Yeah. That's what I imagine. Okay, perfect. Wait, what? Did they think I had Ally Switch or something? Because that's the only way I see that play making sense. I do get the Earth Power off into the Incineroar, so Incineroar does go down. Beautiful. And now I think I just go for the uh, Zacian slot with Earth Power, and I trick him here, I think. Yeah, I trick him here. Close combat, I don't think, knocks out Torkoal in this position. Unless they crit me, of course, but I have to play around the crits anyway right here. Uh, Jellison shouldn't be able to pick up a knockout, especially if it's solo Water Spout. We've only seen Water Spout Strength Sap, and... I'd imagine it has Trick Room, so I don't know what his last move is, but I am going to go for the Trick Room here. It makes sense, because if I get Trick Room up, I'm in a really good offensive position. So yeah, we'll go for Trick Room here, and uh, we'll just go for the Earth Power into the Zacian slot. If they go for, like, Strength Sap sub, that's fine. We are going to see the Behemoth Blade come out. This is going out into Torkoal. Okay, I guess it's a play rough set. I think the only time that makes sense is play rough. Okay. And strength sap. Okay, they lose, I think. Because I'm pretty sure I win with Trevenant. I could be wrong, but I think I win. I do think I win. So, Jellison heals up. I do get an Earth Power off into the Zacian slot. Zacian just goes down and uh, beautiful. Goodbye, Zacian. I wonder if they don't have Shadow Ball. But they would have lost anyway because Calyrex would have just got Trick Him up. The Jellison wouldn't have healed. Uh, if they didn't use Strength Sap here, and then I got Trevenant in, I clicked Force Curse in the Zacian, and uh, Glacial Lance would have done the enough damage to the uh, Jellison like we saw previously. So, I'm going to go into Trevenant here. Because I want to reset this attack drop. I think it's fine for now. Spex Torgo should be doing a good amount anyway. And uh, let's find out if this has Shadow Ball, I guess. Which, I don't even know if it would KO my Trevenant, but we'll see. Here comes Earth Power. I also just don't want my opponent stalling out with my uh, Calyrex slot. They go for a Wisp. Okay. Uh, they miss, but I don't. I think that's fine, realistically. I could also have just gone for like a Forest Curse combination. Uh, just so I could hit this thing with a neutral Glacial Lance. But it's, it's fine. I just go for Horn Leech to make this game even faster. So Horn Leech is going to come out into the Jellison. Kind of interesting to see Jellison and Trevenant here. And uh, if they don't Strength Sap, they just lose. And if they Strength Sap, that's fine. Actually, no, Torkoal's just going to be faster, right? And Earth Power. So, goodbye, Jellicent. Goodbye. <laughs> and that's the power of Heart Trick Room. Just nothing that my opponent really had for it. I mean, the Jellicent was annoying to deal with, but overall, I was able to chip it just fine. I think my aggressive read game or turn two just paid off. I didn't really expect the Zacian to protect there. I thought they would just sub again. Because I just don't see really a downside to it. Because Jellison can fire off a free water spell potentially. I think uh, it, it, it was super aggressive. But I think the obvious play was just to follow me. And do something with Calyx once again. So that's why I thought like they would try to sub up again. Because uh, losing Calyx would go down really. Would go downhill. And I think sub 2 is a very free play overall. It, unless Expanding Force is able to pick up the knock on sub. And that's kind of what I was banking on. Because I do have a pretty offensive NDD. Uh, let's look at their team right here. Assault Vest on the Moltres. Surprised that they don't have Max Candies on it. Rocky Helmet Landris. How do you not have Max Candies on Incineroar 2? Okay. Zacian Adamant. 
a relaxed Amoongus that just got one shot by the Calyrex and the Jellicent, which was interesting. Okay, so it was Wisp Trick Room. So that explains a lot of the set. Not PP up, maxing the Water Spout. Okay, that's that's an interesting set. But overall, just the Jellicent's only water move was Water Spout. So that meant it couldn't really damage my Torkoal. So they didn't have a way to knock out Torkoal, barring crits right there, which kind of makes sense. But yeah, Torkoal was just going to be able to do so much damage uh, overall throughout the game. And... Yeah, my opponent just didn't have a switch in, I think, at that point. Uh, what did we get rid of early? We got rid of Amoongus early, right? So, yeah, nothing really tanked Earth Power choice specs really that well. Azeshaun went down because it was weakened, and Simmer went down, and the Jellicent was pretty low at that point. So, overall, I was just able to chip the opponent and get Trick Room up. And uh, I, even outside of Trick Room, I think I was able to pilot it around to where I could either get a second Trick Room up or I could get rid of the threats I need to clean up for the game. And that is going to be the end of today's video. Getting a bunch of really important forest curse from Traveling. Traveling going insane today. Really love to see it. We didn't get to really use too many of the partners, but hey, I bet we will use them maybe in the next episode. But if you haven't already, if you do enjoy the videos, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a comment down below. It really does help me out. Try out the rental team. You have two weeks to grab it. As I said before, there's a pacement available in the description. And keep your eyes on the team, but if you want to know how I built this team specifically. But... As always, you can check out my social medias down below in the description, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Twitch channel. All that good stuff will be listed in the description down below. But otherwise, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day. And until we battle again, I'll catch you all later.